Pacific Islander American Heritage Month is underway. People gathered at San Antonio Museum of Art yesterday to celebrate their performances from the Vietnamese Association dancers, Chinese fan dancers, even dragon dancers. Different animals are put together to create the dragon used in the traditional dance. This is dragon head. Normally we'll have like a horse or camel head. And the tail, no, it is the body is like a snake shape. Yes, and uh, we also have the scale on this one is a fish. Uh huh. And all, we also have the like uh, uh, the claws, like a tiger claw. Those in attendance also got to enjoy mock porcelain painting, expressive mask creation, and both Japanese and Chinese games. And time now for 42 and 72 degrees for now. Just ahead, a manhunt underway for a murder suspect and a female corrections officer may have helped him escape from an Alabama jail. That's next in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an urgent manhunt. I was totally shocked and of course angry and wondering how is, is that possible. Capital murder suspect Casey White still on the run, along with corrections officer Vicki White, after breaking out of an Alabama jail Friday morning. We're pretty well convinced that, that she assisted Casey White escape. Really, the question we are, have lingering is, did she do that willingly, or was she somehow coerced or forced to, to help him? Vicki's mother sending a message to her. And Just turn herself in. Come home. That's all. That's all she needs to do, just turn herself in, come home. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a full live report from outside the detention center where the whole plot unfolded. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. A military investigation underway after four apparent suicides all happened on one U.S. Navy ship. The ship is one of America's massive aircraft carriers, the USS George Washington. ABC's Phil Lipoff speaks to one of the victim's family about what they hope to get out of that investigation. A sharp rise in crew suicide on a Navy ship, the USS George Washington, docked in Virginia under scrutiny as hundreds of sailors are moved off the ship. The Navy confirming there have been seven deaths in the last 12 months of service members assigned to the ship, four of them apparent suicides, three in one week this month. Natalie and Lamonte's son, Mikhail, one of them. All I can constantly think about is when he was born, his smile. In a statement, the Navy says the circumstances surrounding these incidents vary, and it is premature to make assumptions as some incidents remain under investigation. One thing is clear, all seven deaths happen while the ship has been in port undergoing an overhaul. Last week, the Navy's senior enlisted person, Master Chief Russell Smith, addressed sailors' concerns on the ship, heard here in audio obtained by the Military Times. I'm going to tell you that I understand that we still have a problem, and the department has been focusing on it, but the problem is getting suicide is like getting cancer. It's trying to, there are many different causes, many different reasons. Following the deaths, the Navy says it put into place immediate mental health support, deploying a 13-person special psychiatric rapid intervention team, adding one clinical psychologist and a clinical social worker to the ship, and expediting mental health referrals. You think that maybe your son's death could have been stopped somehow? It's still a mystery to me. Yeah, it, I mean, it, honestly, it's a mystery time. because it's it sudden and it was out of the blue. And that was Phil Lipoff reporting. In 2020, 580 service members died by suicide. That's according to the Defense Department. The suicide rate has increased in all military branches over the previous five years. So if you or anyone you know is suffering, you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. 448, a couple of things to consider as you head out the door this morning and hit the roads. Uh, power outages, we may have some traffic lights out. And of course, we have the ponding of water. Some roads. That's right. We want our drivers to be cautious this morning. Extra cautious. Uh, we do have a new shot we want to show you from Transguide 410 at Broadway. Uh, let's get a closer look. Not exactly sure what's happening here. This just popped up on one of the monitors. So uh, it's an area we have to watch closely. It's very dark out there, but you can see that we do have traffic already moving through that area. Thankfully, without any
any trouble, but those flashing lights off in this dark corner. So again, we'll walk. Uh, we'll work with our friends over at Transguide to find out exactly how this will impact your morning commute. But unfortunately, those issues seem to continue to pile up. Let's talk about what's happening here off I-35 Southbound and New Laredo Highway. If you've been with us throughout the morning, we did tell you about this crash earlier. Just received some information that this is a crash possibly involving an 18 wheeler. Now, while we see this is impacting the southbound lanes of 35, Transguide does tell me that a portion of I-35 northbound at exit 142B is going to be closed as well because a portion of that crash is impacting the northbound lane. So we'll check with them in a little while as the morning does go on. But uh, this is the latest one, US 90 westbound right there near loop 1604. This crash just popped up and unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to see the conditions out there due to a camera that's not working properly. But of course, we'll see how that's going to be impacting that drive time. Keep in mind, if you are traveling out in those westbound lanes toward Castroville, you may encounter that. So as Mark said, you want to stay extra cautious this morning. Also, make sure that you are watching the roads carefully. There still could be some puddles out there and some damp roads, but let's go ahead and check in with Mike Osterhage for the latest. Mike had a lot of rain overnight to uh, just about an eighth of an inch officially out there at the airport. And of course, this uh, this big batch right here. And let me get this uh, kind of going up here one more time. Make sure everything's clicked on right here so I can show you exactly what is going on. And uh, we've had, like I said, a goodly amount, especially down to the uh, south. That big area of rain continues to work its way off to the east and on the back side of it. That's where we've had the windy conditions. Going to talk about that in a moment. First of all, this cell right here around a uh, divine and well, this is not going to work for me right now, but that's been uh, producing some small hail uh, right now. It's being reported as about a half inch diameter hail right there, so that is a little bit smaller, so it does not look like this is going to reach severe criteria, but that will and also it was moving to the northeast. It is now taking more of a kind of a right hand turn moving to the east, so that will continue to work its way into uh, Atascosa County in the next uh, about half hour, 45 minutes moving to the east at 23 miles per hour. As far as the uh, Rainfall amounts, like I said, about an eighth of an inch out there at the airport. Some heavier amounts down in uh, Frio County, southern Atascosa County, further on down to the south, inch, inch and a half, two inches worth of rain. A lot of that did come pretty hard and heavy almost all at once. And here in the southern portion of Bear County, just over an inch of rain going down uh, 281 and then about a half an inch here in downtown. Like I said, one eighth of an inch there at the airport. Wind gusts right now, 37 at the airport, 49 at New Braunfels and 45 at Stinson had uh, kind of a somewhat unusual phenomenon occur on the back side of those storms. They weren't necessarily storm related winds, but the air tends to, to sink down here. And anyway, that's what causes some of these gusts. And like I said, 71 out there, 71 mile per hour wind gusts reported at New Braunfels. So throughout the rest of the morning, the rain was going to continue to work its way on out of here. We'll keep an eye on those few leftover showers and thunderstorms. And then as the uh, day rolls on, we'll still keep some clouds around here. I think we lean more the toward the mostly cloudy side today, although some sunshine is going to be uh, peeking on through here. Then going into tomorrow, we start off with a lot of clouds and throughout the afternoon. There are a couple of computer models that want to try and get a few showers and thunderstorms going well off to the west. We'll have to keep an eye on those for later on tomorrow, late in the afternoon and perhaps further north of the hill country. But here in in town throughout most of the area, I don't think we see any Thing as far as any rain is concerned tomorrow throughout the rest of the morning temperatures are going to be staying fairly steady so the storms have passed on through but we still have plenty of humidity out there we'll still have a couple of straggling showers around given the the 20 percent chance throughout most of the morning commute i think most of what we're going to be dealing with though is just the wet roads and maybe some um, some standing water here and there on the roads throughout most of the morning commute winds going to start to uh, or I should say continue to be out of the south to southeast, uh, still gusting 10, 20 miles per hour, and then the gusts on top of that 25 to 30 miles per hour. And then we're going to be up to 85 later on this afternoon with some sunshine thrown in with those clouds. And as far as the humidity, we are not going to see a break in the humidity throughout the rest of the week and going into the weekend. Dew points will stay way up there, way up right around 70 degrees, and that means it is definitely on the muggy side. And so the forecast today will have a couple leftover showers, maybe another clap of thunder to this morning, and then mostly cloudy skies today at noon, 80 for high temperature, excuse me, 80 at noon, 88 for high temperature today, partly cloudy skies. And again, it is going to be on the, the breezy side. And then tomorrow, 
We keep an eye on those storms off to the uh, west over there, just on the other side of the Rio Grande. We'll just obviously see if those decide to uh, come across the river. And then Wednesday night and Thursday night, a couple of stray thunderstorms are going to try and pop up each of those nights. So that's something we will also keep an eye on. And those temperatures <coughs> remain very hot, about 5, 10 degrees above normal. And we're looking at mid to upper 90s over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, sizzling Mother's Day. No I, kidding. I know, especially Mother's Day. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> The Keep flowers cool. look nice. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Keep them in the fridge. <laughs> 454, about 72 degrees. And coming up, a look at what topped the weekend box office and what flopped. You're afraid because I'm the big bad wolf. It was another number one weekend for the bad guys. The animated family flick topped off the tank with an additional 16 million bucks, bringing its two week domestic gross to 44.4 million. I'm the bad man. I have been for a long time. Liam Neeson's action flick Memory tanked an eighth place debut there. But the box office is really just marking time until Friday. You opened the doorway between universes. That's when Marvel's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness opens to what's expected to be huge numbers. The country music world is still reacting with shock to the passing over the weekend of Naomi Judd. Superstar Carrie Underwood called her a true legend, a word used in many remembrances, including by fellow legend Lord. Loretta Lynn, who said she was heartbroken. Laura Prepon, Topher Grace, and other stars of that 70s show are set to appear in the Netflix spinoff, That 90s Show, starring fellow 70s show regulars Deborah Jo Rupp and Kurtwood Smith. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 458, about 72 degrees. And becoming a teacher in Texas could look a lot different and be a lot more difficult. Ahead in our next half hour, the changes that could mean a new rigorous teacher certification exam. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We had showers and storms overnight. We still have at least one storm in the Case at 12 viewer area that Mike is keeping close tabs on, and Stephen is tracking the roads. We've already had some problems this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's a busy Monday morning, May 2nd. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. And also a noisy Monday morning, well, at least for us, you know, the time that we wake up. I mean, it was pouring out there for a while. Mike, last half hour, you were talking about a storm near Divine. Where is it at? It, that thing has now, just when it was kind of getting me a little bit nervous, uh, it is now really, really starting to sort of ease up. No lightning strikes are being detected on that as of yet either. So uh, that's, con or any more, I should say, that's continuing to work its way off to the uh, east at about, to uh, say, 20 to 23 miles per hour and then further up here to the north you can see a couple of little leftover uh, showers right there right in the uh, oh say 35 1604 area and those appear to be uh, fizzling out as well and then further off to the east there's the uh, the large batch of rain which is also continuing to just move on out of here on the back side of that that's where we had some of the uh, very windy conditions with the uh, winds uh, somewhat of a phenomenon created wind gusts up to 71 miles per hour up around New Braunfels earlier and within the hour it was gusting to 49 right now 15 mile per hour winds 22 out there at the airport 25 at Randolph gust to 26 now New Braunfels 33 at the airport 32 at Port SA and we will continue to have breezy conditions throughout the day today with winds gusting about 25 30 miles per hour mold and oak are both on the moderate side pecan and grass are low I think we're finally done or getting toward the end of the oak season we'll uh, probably see an increase in mold given the fact we've had some rain overnight and earlier this morning. So a little bit of leftover rain around here, but things are definitely, definitely settling down. We'll still be dealing with obviously some wet roads and maybe some puddles on the roads. Most of the cloudy this afternoon. It is going to be breezy. It is going to be on the hot side. Normal high temperatures are in the low 80s. We're going to be mid 80s later on today, mid to upper 80s. Rest of the week, hot and humid. Couple of uh, evening, late evening thunderstorms, Wednesday night and Thursday night. Then we go into the weekend, including Mother's Day. Yeah, we're going to have some morning clouds, some sunshine in the afternoon. But boy, is it going to be hot, mid and upper 90s. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Got some problems out there, right? Yeah, check out that monitor right next to you, Mike. We do have a, somewhat of a big rig that's experiencing some trouble right there off 35 at New Laredo. Uh, this is where we're seeing if you can make this shot out 
out from your uh, your TV at home. Uh, that trailer portion does seem to be hanging off the overpass from this view at Transguide. Flashing lights out there as well. This is not a good area to be in right now, especially if you're heading southbound on I-35 because that's where that crash has been picked up. But not the only problem that we are tracking this morning. Let's go ahead and just take you right to the map, show you what's happening in town. 410 eastbound at Wetmore Road. Uh, we do have this crash. It's not causing issues in the eastbound lanes of 410, but this is an area we saw flashing lights at a little bit earlier, so we'll have to watch it closely. Let's take a drive over here. US 90 westbound at Loop 1604. As I mentioned, this crash, unfortunately, we're not able to show you the conditions out there because the cameras are not working, but we are not seeing any buildup of traffic just yet. But let's go ahead and take you down here to 35 southbound right there at New Laredo Highway where TxDOT has reported that crash. Now we do have a live look at that scene right now from photojournalist Tim Stewart. Let's go ahead and get a view of this right now. Uh, now Tim was just talking to him on the phone, did tell me he was heading southbound and had to exit there off New Laredo Highway. But as he gets a closer look, this does seem to be impacting the northbound lanes where 35 is at uh, near L New Laredo. Pardon me. Now that rig you can see is hanging off the side of the overpass. Tim does tell me that there's two King Kong wreckers out there at this time. So right now it is unclear how long it's going to take before this gets cleared up. But we are already seeing the impacts with some traffic as you saw just on our map. But again, this is off I-35 near New Laredo Highway. We will watch it closely and have more updates right here on GMSA. Mark. Wow, what a mess. Thank you very much, Stephen and Tim Stewart out there with that live look. We're going to take a quick look at the CPS Energy outage map, and we're going to be tracking this all morning for you. Right now, between uh, wind, uh, down power lines, and blown transformers, we have about 4,200 people without power throughout the CPS Energy area, which includes most of Bear County. And uh, we'll continue to update this throughout the morning. Just jumped to 4,190, so went down just a little bit. And you this morning, San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after two people were shot and killed overnight. It happened a little after 11 at an apartment complex on Rust Leaf Drive. Now that's near Old Pearsall Road and Loop 410 on the southwest side of town. Investigators tell us that two men were shot and killed while in the laundry room at that apartment complex. And so far they don't have any suspect information or witnesses. Katrina Weber will have more on this story a little later in the newscast. We are keeping a close eye on a spike in the number of loose and stray dogs seen around San Antonio. Local rescue groups hosted a town hall yesterday where they invited members of the city and animal care services to discuss the problem. As Lee Waldman tells us, a lot of it boils down to spay and neutering issues. We see them roaming the streets, filling rescues and at animal care services. Stray, loose, even owner surrender dogs and cats. Most of the rescue community is just tired overwhelmed, underfunded, and we need help from the city. Deanna Lee organized this town hall at Braun Hall on the northwest side. Today, over 20 of the local rescues were represented. The goal, to lay out issues they're facing when trying to help animals across San Antonio. Spay and neuter is the most important component in um, addressing this stray population in the city. If they're not born, they don't roam the streets and ultimately fill ACS or rescue shelters. But there's still one more problem with that solution. We're only building about 2,500 to 3,000 vets a year. There's currently a deficit of about 7,000. With not enough veterinarians, the number of animals waiting to be spayed and neutered continues to grow. Sims says in the long term, they won't fix the city's problem without that demand being met. The root of the problem is a lack of spay neuter in the community. Uh, both whether the city's paying for it or who's paying for it, there is not enough to service our community right now. This part of the equation won't be solved in the short term. Because of that, rescuers are asking the community to foster. Our most immediate need right now is for fosters because the animals that have, were born need homes. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And Sims with Animal Care Services mentioned he's hopeful the bond that includes a new veterinary hospital will be approved on May 7th by voters. That would double their spay and neutering capabilities and allow them to recruit more veterinarians. You can read more about this story on our website at KSET.com.
Changes could be coming for those looking to become a teacher. State Board for Education Certification made a major step forward in potentially adopting a new rigorous teacher certification exam. State Board voted in favor of requiring the Educative Teacher Performance Assessment in an 8 to 1 vote on Friday. None of the new tests requires teachers submit answers to essay style questions, provide a sample lesson plan, and a 15 minute video, video, 15 minute video rather of themselves teaching in a classroom. Supports say of this test, it'll be a better support, it'll be better support and retain new teachers. Those who oppose it say it creates a barrier because it costs nearly $200 more. This new test, not in effect yet, but was only passed by the Board for Educator Certification. The State Board of Education will need to approve it in a vote as well, which is expected to happen in June. 509 about 71 degrees. And still to come, Amazon no longer offering paid leave for workers who test positive for COVID. Details ahead in your morning tech bites. Plus the first solar eclipse of 2022. We'll explain. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're at 71 degrees. Uh, a little bit of rain here and there. We'll be checking in with Mike pretty soon. Welcome back. The first solar eclipse of 2022 is in the record books. Folks across South America, Antarctica, the Pacific and Southern Oceans were able to take in the site. The next partial eclipse is set for October and will be visible in Europe, Northeastern Africa, the Middle East and Western Asia. And you can take a look at these adorable pictures. Princess Charlotte is turning seven years old. The royal family releasing these pictures to celebrate. Spinning image of her dad. Yeah, she's cute. Right now, 513, still 71 degrees. And before we head to break, here's a live look at the radar. We're going to be right back. Who do you think you are? Canceling plans? Commanding a room? Being your own biggest fan? Who said you could do that? Say no to settling. No to compromising. Yes to getting all of the above. Who? No. Really, tell us, who do you think you are? Oh, you're you. And TJ Maxx is where you can afford to be you to the max. On any weekend, work day, or wedding day, healthy looking skin feels amazing. Eucerin Advanced Repair has more than ceramides. It has natural moisturizing factors, locking in moisture for 48 hours. Eucerin, healthy looking skin every day. Blackbeard just finished plundering and there was treasure all over the deck. He tripped over some jewels and is like, yo, we got to get organized. I told you we're going to be filthy rich, not rich and filthy. So they deep cleaned the ship and that was the first spring cleaning. We may not know how it started, but Stanley Steamer knows how to get it done. Schedule your cleaning today. In today's Tech Bites, the end of paid COVID leave at Amazon. As of today, workers for the tech giant will be allowed to use sick time or take unpaid leave if they test positive. Amazon staffers will no longer be granted time off to wait for COVID test results. Microsoft will soon offer improved security by adding a free built-in virtual private network. The VPN will encrypt your web traffic to keep your browsing information private. It also lets you use a virtual IP address to hide your location. It will roll out as part of a security upgrade. Finally, a guy who makes custom game controllers has come up with this. He turned a Fisher Price toy meant for babies into a fully functioning controller for his Xbox, and it still plays all of the Fisher Price sound effects. Who knows? This could turn out to be a real game changer. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Let's get a look at the roadways 517 at this hour. Right now we are tracking this problem here at 35 at New Laredo. Getting a closer look from TransGuy, that is part of a big rig that we are seeing that is uh, obviously experienced some trouble out there. This crash is considered a major crash according to TxDOT and you can see based off this view of TransGuy, it doesn't look like we'll see this result anytime soon. We do want to take you right to the map because we do have a few issues here in town. We'll first start off off of 410. Uh, actually, we'll start here, pardon me, uh, off of I-35 South Bend at New New Laredo Highway. Now you see that portion of the traffic is starting to build in the southbound lanes of 35. Uh, our photojournalist Tim Stewart is actually out there and we'll talk to him in just a moment and uh, see what the looks like the conditions that is. But what he did tell me is that he had to exit New Laredo Highway there because that portion again shut down because of what we were seeing. But let's take that drive over here uh, for 410 in the eastbound lanes near Wetmore Road where we had a second crash that's been picked up. This one's not causing as many problems, but as I mentioned, the big issue will be out toward 35. Let's go ahead and get that live 
live look from photojournalist Tim Stewart. Now, Tim does also mention to me uh, that they are cutting up the guardrail that the truck knocked off. He does say that it looks like that truck might be wedged or it might be wedged under the truck. So he did mention also earlier that there's two King Kong wreckers that are out there at this hour working to clear this up, but it doesn't look like it's going to be cleared up anytime soon. We could start seeing some delays with traffic as the morning does progress. But again, a live shot from photojournalist Tim Stewart. Tim, thank you for staying out there and getting us a look, but let's check in with Mike. How's the weather going to be looking for the rest of the day? Okay, quick question. It almost looked like there were two trucks that they were working on the, the back wheels of one trailer and then that one hanging off there. So be able yeah. to see a little more when the sun comes right. up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much and, and great, uh, great shots, Tim. All right. Here's what's going on. All the heavy rain that we had overnight continues to work its way off to the east. We still have this one lone cell right here, which about a half an hour, 45 minutes ago was producing some inch diameter hail. And this thing is just continuing to sort of fizzle on out. It is there in uh, northern Atascosa County, continuing to work its way to the east at roughly uh, 30 miles per hour. So it is moving along at a pretty good clip and this will move off again to the east at uh, 30 miles per hour. So within the next uh, say half an hour, it's going to be right around uh, Loma Vista at 556 and Lemming at 529. Again, this is continuing to weaken. It may actually fizzle on out before it ever reaches any of those areas. So, but we will continue to watch that. Although as far as anything um, severe, any more around here that has now uh, moved on past. We'll just have a couple of leftover showers throughout the rest of the morning. We did have some very strong winds earlier this morning. There was a uh, kind of a phenomenon that set up in behind the, the big area of rain that moved on through here that created some of those wind gusts. Uh, once again, if you haven't heard, 71 mile per hour wind gusts reported around New Braunfels earlier this morning. Temperatures right now, upper 60s, low 70s. We are about 10 degrees above normal. We've got a lot of humidity out there, and the humidity is definitely going to be sticking around. And here's these wind gusts right now, 31 at, the, at Randolph, 33 at the airport 25 Castroville. It will remain breezy throughout the rest of today. A couple of leftover showers here, so that's why I've got the 20% chance in throughout the rest of the morning. Maybe uh, a stray leftover sprinkle and then moving off to the east. Temperatures will be pretty steady over the next couple of hours. Then we are going to make it into the mid and upper 70s and hit 80 at noon and then go into the mid and leaning toward the upper 80s, 86 for a high temperature today. Obviously, in your backyard, if the skies open up a little bit more as far as clouds opening up, you are going to get warmer than that. As far as the humidity, it is going to remain very humid. We'll see somewhat of our 24 hour or a daily cycle where the humidity drops slightly in the afternoon, but don't count on anything dry around here at all. We will have the humidity coming back in again tomorrow morning and pretty much staying on the higher side throughout the afternoon tomorrow as well. Now, jumping into the future. First of all, this long range computer model initialized on some of those showers earlier this morning. It wants to keep one or two around this afternoon disagree with that. And then tomorrow we start off with clouds and we'll have some sunshine in the afternoon. Wednesday, same situation, but then Wednesday night we do have a chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms to develop and that would be late in the evening, maybe into the uh, about midnight hour, early Thursday morning. And same thing then on Thursday where we'll have another chance for a couple of stray late night uh, thunderstorms to pop up. Then after that we're going to have plenty of sunshine around here. Morning clouds, afternoon sunshine. That'll be the case Friday in through the weekend and hot temperatures this week. 80 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Again, a leftover shower or two this morning, but the uh, widespread heavy rain has definitely moved on out of here. 88 for a high temperature today, partly cloudy skies. And again, it is going to be breezy wind out of the south to southeast, 10, 20 miles per hour gusting on top of that. 90 tomorrow, 92 Wednesday, more clouds Thursday, hold temperatures down a little bit and that chance for a couple of uh, late night thunderstorms Wednesday night as well as Thursday night, Mother's Day. It's going to be hot. If you're having brunch or lunch or dinner on the patio, we are. Prepare yourself. Yes. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, I mean, you know, misters, you know, hopefully shade. Fans. Fans. Right. Air conditioning units. Yeah, it'll be well, nice. Well, it's regardless nice. of the weather, I know Bonnie will want to be fanned by, by you. Yeah, daily, <laughs> daily activity. Daily occurrence. <laughs> 523, about 71 degrees. She deserves it. Yes, of course.
And Bill Murray speaking out about the complaint that shut down production on a movie. Details ahead in your morning spotlight news. Pick three numbers, 916, Fireball 9. Your daily four numbers, 6471, Fireball 8. Cash 5, 4, 13, 15, 27, 30. A lot of Texas, 1, 8, 13, 18, 34, 45. And your Powerball numbers, 14, 21, 37, 44, 63, Powerball 1, Power Play 3. Good luck. Thank you. Bill Murray is speaking out about the complaint that shut down production on a movie. Murray told CNBC he had a difference of opinion with a woman on the set of Being Mortal. Quote, I did something I thought was funny and it wasn't taken that way. Adding, things change and the times change, so it's important for me to figure it out. I think it's a sad dog that can't learn anymore. Well, we have, you know, very good material to, to jump off from. You know? Russell Crowe is headed for the land of bad. Deadline reports he'll star in an action thriller by that title about an Air Force drone pilot supporting a special ops mission that goes awry. Liam Hemsworth is set to co-star as a rookie air controller. He's also starring with Crow in the crime thriller Poker Face. There's a star in the sky. Fifty years after its release, there's an official lyric video for David Bowie's Starman, off his breakthrough album The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. The album is getting a limited edition 50th anniversary remastered LP and picture disc, due out June 17th. On a wave of phase in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And if you occasionally mess up the lyrics like me, this clears up a lot. Yeah, it helps out. <laughs> it will. 527, about 71 degrees on your Monday morning. And ahead in our next half hour, the latest on the war in Ukraine. We're going to show you what people there are dealing with now, months after the fighting began. San Antonio police are looking for the person who played especially dirty in this laundry room. The person who shot and killed two men here. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're at 71 degrees now. We started out with some heavy rain in some areas. Sure did. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, May 2nd. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you got your share of rain. Uh, if not, maybe a little later, just in spots. But let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see what we can expect. Uh, officially out at the airport, picked up uh, 13 hundredths of an inch of rain, roughly an eighth of an inch. And some folks, especially further on down to the south and southwest around Pearsall, uh, Crystal City, anywhere from an inch to even a little bit more than two inches of rain. That was all the heavy rain, which is well off to the east right now. In behind, we do still have a few showers that are still sort of uh, lingering around here from Hondo down toward Divine. It looks like uh, just a little bit of leftover rain. And and then also we've got just a couple of these small little uh, heavier downpours. That cell, which is almost completely gone right there around Poteet, that was one that did produce about an hour and a half ago some small hail. And then there are a couple of more spots where very, very small ones with a moderate to perhaps heavy downpour, but these are moving off to the east fairly quickly. So that's pretty much it as far as the overall rain is concerned. Um, a leftover sprinkler two this morning. That's going to be the extent of it. Now, as far as the wind, that was a bigger problem earlier on the backside of that big area of rain. We had a phenomenon that popped up, which produce wind gusts anywhere from about 50 to 70 miles per hour reported up around New Braunfels and now sustained winds are 15 to 20, 25 and then we do still have some gusts on top of that and that will be the situation today. It is going to be still very breezy out there. Mold and oak are on the moderate side, low amounts of pecan and grass and it's going to make it up to 80 today at noon. Yeah, a few leftover showers maybe hanging around here this morning. That's what's taking into account with that or even a thunderstorm well off to the east. And then five o'clock, we're going to be up to 86 degrees. Again, it is going to be breezy. The overall trend this week is to stay on the hot side. Couple of more chances for rain, very limited, but at least a couple of chances of rain. We'll take a look at the Mother's Day forecast in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, big problems out there, right? That's right, Mike. Let's go ahead and get a look at Transguide 35 at New Laredo. We have been showing you this shot all morning long. Now, uh, this view at Transguide does show a portion of a big rig that looks like it is hanging off the overpass there. We have a photojournalist, Tim Stewart, who's been out there for us all morning long. We'll talk to him and get a view of the conditions out there in just a moment. But some of the issues we are starting to see pile on. Let's go ahead and take you right 
right to the map here. Starting up off 281 over here on the north side, right there at Evans Road, there is a crash that's been reported. Now, if you're familiar with our trans guide cameras, you know that there are no cameras out in this area, so we can't show you those conditions, but we'll watch it closely. Again, 281 northbound at Evans Road. We'll take that drive down over here. We still have this crash off 410 eastbound at Wetmore Road, but the big problem will be right over here off I-35 southbound, right there at New Laredo Highway, where that crash was reported by TxDOT. Now, let's get a look at that scene from photojournalist Tim Stewart. Uh, you can see right now that we are seeing the process of getting this all cleared up. Now, as I mentioned, that crash was reported off I-35 southbound. Uh, Tim did mention to me that traffic it was being pushed off the southbound lanes of I-35 to New Laredo. The northbound lanes of I-35 have been closed at 142B. As you can see that we are still seeing the part of this crash getting cleared up. Now, that rig was hanging off the side of the overpass. And when we last saw this shot from Tim, we did see some sparks flying. That's because they were cutting up a guardrail. Tim also mentioned that there are two King Kong wreckers out there, and we think that this could be a while before this actually clears up. And thankfully, he's in a safe location to get us a view of that shot. But we will watch it closely. Tim, thanks again for staying out there for us. We're going to watch this thing closely and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Right now, here's a look at the CPS outage map, and we're down to 3,000 customers affected. It was about 4,000 a little earlier in the newscast. And you this morning, San Antonio police are trying to learn more about the deaths of two men who were shot in the laundry room of a west side apartment complex. They found the bodies there late last night. Katrina Weber is live where it happened not far from Joint Base Lackland on a street called Rust Leaf Drive. And Katrina, how did police find out about the shootings? Well, Stephanie, uh, police tell us that neighbors called them after hearing the gunshots, and they told them there were quite a few shots. Now, those people say that uh, what they didn't know at the time was that this would turn out to be what appears to be a double murder. Police say that they found the two men, both of who appeared to be in their 20s, both of them dead. Those shootings happened after 11 last night. This is the 100 block of Rustleaf Drive off West Military. Police say neighbors told them they heard multiple gunshots, then later found the men on the floor of the laundry room of this apartment complex. No one actually saw it when it happened, so police do not have a whole lot of information right now. But when they spoke with us, they did not mention anything about any weapons being found here. So it does appear that perhaps there was another person involved, that someone else shot these two men as opposed to them shooting each other. But police do caution that they are just beginning their investigation right now. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Other stories are following this morning. After a weekend of high-profile talks, U.S. leaders are preparing for more action on Ukraine. The Senate could take up a relief package as early as this week. The White House says First Lady Jill Biden will leave Thursday for a trip to Romania and Slovakia. That's to show support for Ukrainian refugees. CNN's Amy Kiley reports House Speaker Nancy Pelosi starts today in Poland after a surprise trip to Ukraine over the weekend. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi meeting with the Polish president today after her talk with the Ukrainian president over the weekend. It's a show of support for a NATO ally. That's as Russia's war in Ukraine is prompting Sweden and Finland to consider joining the alliance. It really shook both the people and the government, I think, in, in a way that, that nobody was expecting. A member of the congressional delegation that traveled to Ukraine with Pelosi is giving more details about that visit. He says it covered U.S. aid for the war-torn nation. We wanted to discuss with him within that, uh, that really vast sum uh, what is the priority in terms of what weapons that he needs, what other assistance that he needs. Back home in the U.S., lawmakers are preparing to take up a relief package for Ukraine. Hopefully either this week or the next. Of course, if there is consensus, if there is an agreement, as you know, uh, anything can uh, go through the Senate through unanimous consent. It's a $33 billion proposal from the Biden administration. Republicans have expressed support for some kind of assistance. If there's another request for Ukraine, I think there's no overwhelming likelihood it will be approved. But if somehow there is a desire to start picking it apart or having amendments to it, it could last longer. Uh, but time is of the essence. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, Spanish officials say the cell phones of the prime minister and defense minister were infected last year with spyware only available to government agencies and an operation not authorized by the government. A government minister said that Monday, Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's phone was breached twice in May of 2021. 
2021, and Spanish Defense Minister Margarita Robles' device was targeted once the following month. Spanish officials say the breaches resulted in a significant amount of data being obtained. It's not clear who is behind the breach. And today, the next round of real life drama for actor Johnny Depp and ex-wife Amber Heard, with Heard reportedly set to take the stand in a Virginia courtroom. Depp filing a defamation suit against Heard for $50 million, Heard counter suing for $100 million. So far, the trial highlighted by days of testimony airing the former couple's dirty laundry. Heard was has accused Depp of repeatedly assaulting her throughout their relationship, including in 2015, where she claims in court documents that he headbutted her. Depp denies ever hitting her during their relationship. There are only two days of early voting left. So far in Bear County, more than 25,400 people have cast their votes. Some popular locations being Brook Hollow, Igo, and Maverick Libraries. Early voting will continue today and tomorrow. Polling hours 8 to 8. To see a sample ballot or for a list of all those polling locations, head over to ksat.com. Election Day is Saturday, May 7th. Time now, 539 and about 71 degrees out there. Mike's been keeping tabs on the weather this morning, and we still have some showers in the area, but it looks like the bulk of the storms have moved out for now. Are there more storms in the forecast? We'll talk to him coming up after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam, now the storms have passed, a little breezy out there. Uh, look out for debris on the roadways. We'll be right back. And welcome back to 542. We all know seasonal allergies are no fun. Allergies affect nearly 50 million people in the U.S. And according to the Allergy and Asthma Foundation of America, there are some cities where seasonal allergies are more challenging than others. And San Antonio just happens to be one of them. A new report ranks San Antonio as number five of the top 10 most challenging places to live with seasonal allergies. Other cities that ranked in the top 10 were McAllen at number three, Wichita, Kansas at number two, Scranton, Pennsylvania coming in at number one. Baseball legend Jackie Robinson's all-star game bat sold for $1 million at auction Saturday. Golden Auctions announced the sale of the 1949 bat, which came directly from Rachel Robinson, Jackie's widow. It's rare for a baseball bat to fetch more than a million dollars. The most expensive piece of Jackie Robinson memorabilia is a game-worn Brooklyn Dodgers jersey. His famous number 42 jersey sold for more than $4.2 million last year. Yeah, understandable. The guy <laughs> is a legend. Yeah, he is. Time now, 543 and 71 degrees for now. Price of diesel fuel on the rise. After the break, what record prices could mean for your wallet. Welcome back, 546. Traffic and weather coming up. New concerns about rising gas prices first, though. This time, it's the price that truckers are paying. And it could affect all of us. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. This morning, diesel fuel prices hitting an all-time high. Now $5.30 per gallon, up more than $2 from last year. Just to fill up this truck, um, I'd say about a year ago, it was less than... I don't know, about $80 to fill it up, and now it's over 200 The record prices could fuel higher inflation, putting more strain on American wallets. That's because diesel is essential to the supply chain. Nearly all heavy-duty trucks and nearly all trains use diesel. So do most cargo ships. And with shipping companies now facing the extra cost, consumers can expect to face higher prices on nearly everything. Even energy costs could be affected. Coal is transported to power plants in diesel power trains. Diesel engines also also power most agricultural equipment, which means farmers could pass along the higher costs. Prices on those consumer goods may rise gradually, but for truckers, the pain is immediate. This law, for example, I uh, made that law for $2,300. Now I'm doing it for 1900 In some parts of the country, diesel prices now top $6 per gallon. And considering many big rigs only get about six miles to the gallon, some drivers are now paying more than a dollar per mile on the highway. I'm losing money, you know. And to be honest, I don't know what I'm going to do. Meanwhile, oil companies are reporting rising profits. Chevron posting a $6.3 billion profit last week, nearly four times what the company reported this time last year. Democrats are promising legislation that would allow the Federal Trade Commission to monitor prices and go after oil companies. They are hoarding the windfall while keeping prices high for people at the pump. As for regular gas, those prices now average $4.18 a gallon, up six cents in the last week as demand ramps up before summer. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 
It's now 548. And still problems on I-35 and New Laredo Highway. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cabasos. And we can expect these problems to continue at least for the next hour or so just to be safe. But let's get that wide look at Trans Guide 35 at New Laredo. Uh, that is where we are seeing a big rig that has been, it looks like it is off there and the, uh, falling off the uh, overpass there. Uh, it looks like it's almost dangling actually now that we are taking a closer look. Uh, as the morning does go on and if we see this continue, of course, we'll get a brighter look and see what the conditions look like. But Let's talk about what we are seeing on the map right now because there are a few crashes that we want to get to. Starting up here, 281 over on the north side, there in those northbound lanes at Evans Road, Texas has reported a crash. As a quick reminder, there are no cameras out there, but thankfully we're not seeing the conditions really change in that area. Just a lot of green on the screen, so that's some good news. Hopefully, those first responders can get that cleared out as the morning does continue. But uh, this crash still uh, out there, our Flute 410 eastbound at Wetmore Road. So some of the same issues have stayed on our map, and we're not seeing them really cause any problems, but the one that is continuing to cause problems is going to be here off I-35 South and at New Laredo Highway. Now that is where TxDOT reported that crash, and that is where we find our photojournalist Tim Stewart, who's been showing us what it looks like out there. And this is a scene right now, and you can see we are watching crews in the process clearing up this mess that is definitely going to cause an impact for that drive time. Now again, that crash was reported off I-35 Southbound near New Laredo Highway. Spoke to Tim earlier. He said traffic Traffic is being pushed off 35 to New Laredo. Now those northbound lanes of I-35 are actually closed at 142B as the cleanup process is still taking place. Now the rig was hanging off the side of the overpass and we are seeing that progress continue. Earlier we saw them cutting up a guardrail and we are expecting two King Kong wreckers to clear this entire scene up, but that could take a little while. So we ask you to pack your patience this morning. And uh, Mike, just to mention that uh, you referenced that you thought you saw another vehicle out there, but those those were actually the rear wheels, rear wheels of that truck. So uh, we're going to watch okay. it closely and continue to take a keep an eye on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for getting yeah. that. Wow, what a scene though. Great shot from Tim. All right, here's what it looks like on radar right now. All the heavy rain that we had overnight has either diminished or moved on out. That's the uh, what's left over of that batch of rain that moved through overnight. Eighth of an inch out officially out there at the airport and sound of the southwest anywhere from an inch to two inches of rain. Not a drop buster, but boy, it sure was nice, especially when you look at our lawns and a lot of them are kind of on the uh, the brownish side. So here in town, we do still have a few uh, light showers. Some's mixed in with some of this uh, clutter around here. Uh, light rain, that's the only spot is the airport that's reporting any rain as of right now. We do have a couple more little spots down here to the uh, south, but again, it, it's Taking into account leftovers this morning, the big rain event has moved on out of here. As far as temperatures, 72 in town. We are almost 10 degrees above normal, upper 60s in the hill country, and it is very breezy out there. Wind gusts 33 at the airport, 26 at New Braunfels, and 28 at Pleasanton. Of course, the news earlier this morning was the fact that we had winds that were gusting about seven at 1.71 miles per hour reported out there at New Braunfels Airport, a phenomenon set up in behind this cluster of storms that moved moved on through and that's what created the windier conditions earlier. Things obviously have settled, but that's just down to where it is right now, which is still very breezy and it's going to stay breezy throughout the rest of the morning. This is taking into account the 20% the leftover uh, sprinkly showers around here, so it'll still be damp for your morning commute. And obviously we're not going to have a chance to dry out with all this humidity out there and the cloud cover. Uh, yes, the traffic and the tires on the road is going to help to dry things out somewhat. We will see some sunshine peeking on through by late this morning, 80 at noon then. Then we make it up in through the mid and leaning toward the upper 80s later on for a high temperature of 86. Again, southerly wind 10, 20 miles per hour and gusting 25 to 30 still throughout the day, still breezy. Low temperatures are going to be staying well above average and high temperatures are also going to be staying well above average by a good 10 degrees. And look at that by the weekend, we're going to be topping off mid and upper 90s around here. It is going to be a sizzler of a weekend looking way down the road into next week. First of all, we've got this high, which is sort of dominating things. All the uh, any 
weather features, any tracks are moving well up to the north of us. We will have a couple of disturbances sliding through here late Wednesday night as well as late Thursday night to give us a chance for some rain and nothing really changes. This is kind of a hate to use the word typical, but a typical summertime pattern with all those storm systems, everything up to the north. What's uh, interesting, what may happen next week though is this is setting up with a big low off the east coast, one over there around four corners and that high right there and this almost wants to form the Greek letter Omega, the upper level steering winds. You get sort of an Omega block. That means things don't move along very well. And some of the long, long range computer models, and it's still a week away or so, but have uh, with this configuration, have a decent amount of rain around here for then next week. Again, it's still a ways off. Things can change, but um, kind of an encouraging forecast for next week. 80 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 88 today, partly cloudy and breezy with winds again gusting 25 30 miles per hour out of the south primarily 90 on average for high temperatures 70 on average for low temperatures all the way through the weekend couple of uh, late night thunderstorms Wednesday night and Thursday night and very hot for Mother's Day mid and upper 90s and plenty of humidity <sighs> nice and hot yep Still celebrate though. Oh, of course. of course. And every day should be Mother's Day, right? Oh, I think so. <laughs> well, and Father's Day, of course. <laughs> Mike's Day. like, no. <laughs> we default to you, Steph. 554, <laughs> about 70 degrees. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Again, the flashing lights there at I-35 at New Laredo. Big problems all morning there. The crews may be out there for a while picking up the pieces. Uh, we'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from Ukraine. The urgent evacuation of roughly 100 civilians from the besieged steel factory and the new sign of solidarity from the U.S. Also, we're celebrating Naomi Judd, the country music legend's daughter, spoke at the Country Music Fall of Fame induction. We'll tell you what we're learning. And our best friend, Charlie Gibson. <laughs> I said best friend, so sure, he's my best friend. Here live with his daughter talking about their next chapter right here at ABC. All of that and so much more coming up on GMA. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Today we're going to take you behind the gates of Blackland Air Force Base and show you what basic military training looks like for recruits arriving here in San Antonio. Police say neighbors make a disturbing discovery in the laundry room of their apartment complex. Two men found shot dead. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And we're going to tell you what you need to know about the 2022 midterm elections and how redistricting could impact the results. And our big story of the morning, staying on top of this crash. And you're looking live, an 18-wheeler hanging off of I-35 near New Laredo Highway. Our Stephen Cavazos will tell you everything you need to know as you get ready to head out the door. And a quick look there at the radar. Uh, most of the heavy showers happened overnight. Uh, you could still see there. I was going to say there was a cell earlier this morning, but we're going to be checking with Mike pretty soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Monday, May 2nd. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good news. We all got rain, I guess. Uh, earlier we were talking about, I guess it was at the Divine area, but maybe that fizzled out. We had some showers and storms move through overnight. We had some wind as well, and we think that all contributed to some power outages. All right, big change here. Yeah. We've seen about a thousand customers get their power restored in the last hour to hour and a half. Right now, CPS Energy reporting about 1,300 50 customers without power throughout the area could be due to the high winds, blown transformers or transformers or uh, also downed power lines. Yes, but that number is down from about, uh, I guess, over 3,000. It was earlier in the newscast. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see the latest. You know, I would have to venture a guess. I, I don't, this is strictly a guess on my part, but I would almost have to say that a lot of that is due to the winds because we did have a, a phenomenon set up as the storms moved on through here. And of course, we had some pretty good winds with those storms, but we had some gusts. Uh, the one gust reported at New Braunfels, 71 miles per hour and up to about 45 to 50 miles per hour out at the airport. It has settled on. It's still breezy out there and it's still going to be breezy throughout the rest of the day. Now, as far as rain right now, we uh, you were talking about that one 
cell that had popped up about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, right there, as Steph mentioned, around Divine, and it did produce some hail, but yes, that has definitely sort of fizzled on out. Now we just have a couple of these leftover, the ones that well, stand out somewhat on the map right here, just to the uh, south and southwest of Floresville and Poth sliding off to the east at 20 miles per hour, a moderate shower right there. That is pretty much about it here in town. A few light little sprinkly showers, and that's the extent of it. That over there to the east of us, that Obviously, that has settled down quite a bit, but that was the big area of rain that moved through in the overnight hours. Rainfall total out at the airport picked up an uh, eighth of an inch. We'll take it. My yard, your yard can use it as well, and perhaps some more later on in the forecast. 72 degrees in, in town right now, 76 stints and 60s in the hill country. It is still humid out there. We are not going to get a break at all from the humidity, not only really today, but also throughout the rest of the week. Wind right now, 10 miles per hour out of the uh, south to southeast 16 Stinson Port SA and then wind gusts still got them out there Stinson 29 20 Rio Medina Castroville at 18 miles per hour obviously nothing like what we had earlier this morning at mold and oak are both on the moderate side pecan and grass are low and throughout the rest of the morning temperatures are going to stay pretty steady where they are right now this is just to take into account any leftover showers that may straggle in behind a couple of showers. I don't even think we'll see any lightning uh, left over this morning and then 86 for high temperature later on today with uh, partly to mostly cloudy skies. Winds out of the southeast 10 to 20 miles per hour gusting at times. It's going to stay hot this week. Like I said, a couple of more small rain chances. We'll talk about that and take a look ahead to Mother's Day in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, big, big problem there on the southwest side. Yeah, Mike, unfortunately, we have not seen a whole lot of progress out there, at least from this view at Transguide. Uh, getting a wider look, we can see that that big rig still is, again, right there off of that overpass where it's, you can see it almost hanging there. That is where we have an incident that was reported around 3 o'clock this morning. So as the morning has gone on, we have really not seen a whole lot of progress, but keep in mind whenever we see these types of problems, it does take a little while for it to clear out. Let's go ahead and talk about what we are seeing here, though, and what we learned so far. Our photojournalist Tim Stewart has been out there, as you just saw a little bit earlier in the newscast. Now, the crash was reported off I-35 southbound by TxDOT. Traffic in the meantime is being directed off of 35 onto New Laredo Highway as they can crews work to clear the scene up. Now, those northbound lanes of 35 are also closed at 142B as for that cleanup process. The rig, again, you can see there, it is hanging off the side of the overpass. Last time we talked to Tim, he did tell us that they were cutting up the guardrail there, that two King Kong wreckers were on the scene, but we can expect this to be there a little while longer, at least probably up until the end of the newscast. Let's go ahead and take you right to the map because where we are seeing that impact is the southbound lanes again, 35 at New Laredo, where Texas has reported that crash. So we'll look for alternative routes as the morning does go on. But as we get the wide look at the map, thankfully we are not spotting any other major issues around the metro area. But it does look like there was a stall off of I-10, possibly near Crossroads. Travel times. Now, if you are heading to the Alamo City, we haven't talked about travel times just yet, but no need to rush out the door for our friends up in Bulverde. The usual travel time, 29 minutes on 281 southbound to the Alamo City. And we know this is a lot of information, so stay with KSAT for the very latest. We're going to have more updates right here on GMSA. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say they found loads of trouble inside the laundry room of a west side apartment complex. Two men dead from gunshot wounds. Neighbors called them late last night after hearing the gunshots in the 100 block of Rust Leaf. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Have police learned anything more about what has happened out there, Katrina? The last time we spoke with them, police told us that they were just beginning their investigation. At that time, they said they had not found anyone who actually saw what happened. The well, officers answered the call around 11 last night. They found the bodies of two men who both appeared to be in their 30s inside the laundry room. This apartment complex is not far from Joint Base Lackland on Rustleaf Drive near West Military. Police say neighbors reported hearing multiple gunshots, but again, no one actually saw anything. Right now, they don't have any information on who shot those men or why. The police did not mention anything about any weapons being found here either, so it appears that someone else shot those men as opposed to them shooting each other. But again, investigators do not have any information 
on who that person would be. Although the crime scene tape has come down this morning, there are still some telltale signs about what happened here late last night. There are, are several bullet holes in the walls of that laundry room, as well as blood both inside and outside that facility. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Election Day in Bear County is just five days away, and with that, it means there's only two days of early voting left. So far in Bear County, more than 25,400 people have cast their vote. Some popular locations being the Brook Hollow and Maverick Libraries. Early voting will continue today and Tuesday, polling hours and 8 a.m. to 8, 8 p.m. To see a sample ballot for a list of polling locations, you can head to KSET.com. Election Day is Saturday, May 7th. Now to the midterm elections and what's sure to play a major role in determining who wins in November. It's called redistricting and it's changing how congressional districts are drawn in each state according to results from the 2020 census. That is not new. What is new is Democratic and Republican seats are nearly equal and that may not be the best thing. ABC's Karen Travers explains. Show the bill passes. Redistricting, a major political storyline for the past year. It's the process of redrawing the nation's 435 congressional districts to reflect the results of the 2020 census. It's nearly complete. Just four states still have to draw new maps for the upcoming elections, while maps in several states are being challenged in court. Democrats with big gains, making the House playing field between the two parties more balanced than it's been in decades. There will be about 220 to 200 223 Republican leaning seats and 212 to 215 Democratic leaning seats. Nathaniel Rakich of 538, a polling data analysis group, says this shift is because Democrats cranked up their gerrymandering game to match Republicans. It's a situation of two wrongs don't necessarily make a right. Um, the House map is more balanced, but it's because there has been gerrymandering on both sides. A big implication, just around 8 to 10 percent of districts will be truly competitive this year. This means that the battle for the House is going to be waged on increasingly narrow terrain. More seats than ever are going to be safe in one column or the other. Drawing even with Republicans doesn't mean Democrats are favored to hold on to the majority in the House. The national political environment will have a big impact on the outcome of the November midterms. How voters feel about the economy and inflation, how they feel about the job President Biden is doing. And one other key point about redistricting, partisanship isn't the only way to measure the fairness of congressional maps. Another way is to look at whether the map kind of provides full representation to people of color. And in a lot of ways, the new congressional map falls short of that. Lawsuits could remedy that, but time is quickly running out for any changes to be made in time for the 2022 election. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer news, American shoppers may be hitting their limit. Several companies now say they're starting to see signs that inflation is running at its highest rate since 1981, and it's changing what people buy. So cigarette maker Marlboro reporting that smokers are switching brands. Mattress makers say the demand is falling, and even florists like 1-800-Flowers say people are spending less on bouquets. Disappointing earnings results from some major companies may be weighing on investors this week. Friday saw Amazon stock fall 14% after reporting its slowest sales growth in at least 12 years. That will pull the S&P down 3.6% to end last week. And nearly half of the S&P 500 still have to report for first quarter earnings. It's the end of paid COVID leave at Amazon. As of today, workers for the tech giant will be allowed to use sick time or take unpaid leave if they test positive. Amazon staffers will no longer be granted time off to wait for COVID test results. And a guy who makes custom game controllers has come up with this. He turned a Fisher Price toy meant for babies into a fully functioning controller for his Xbox. It still plays all of the Fisher Price sound effects. Might be problems for a toddler watching you play video games. Like, and hey, my I, turn. I know. Yeah, Dad. When do I get that back? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right now we're at six eleven, about seventy one degrees. And March more to come on GMSA, including the deadly turn at one of South Texas's largest festivals. We're going to have that story coming up a little later on GMSA. And after the break, we look back at the extraordinary career of Naomi Judd after her unexpected death over the weekend. And taking a look outside with a live cam, you can expect a breezy day. We had a lot of rain overnight, 71 degrees for now. We'll be right back.
It is quarter past the hour on a busy Monday morning. Yes, it has been busy, especially right there at I-35 and New Laredo Highway. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, this has been the problem spot of the morning. Thanks, Mark and Steph. Let's get a look at Trans Guy. That is where we see a big rig that almost look that we're seeing. Uh, it has almost fallen off of that overpass there at 35. Uh, it's been dangling there for over two hours. This crash came and was reported around three o'clock this morning. Haven't really seen much progress, unfortunately, with first responders out there, but that's because these situations do take some time. Let's go ahead and talk about what we are seeing here though on the map 35 South and a new Laredo Highway. Again, that is where that traffic has just continued to build in that direction. And that's actually where we find our photojournalist Tim Stewart, who has been showing us what the conditions look like this morning. Now again, that crash, according to text out reported off I 35 Southbound t traffic was uh, being directed off of 35 to new Laredo. But keep in mind those northbound lanes of 35 are also closed as a precaution because this could take a little while to clear up. So that rig you can see hanging off on the side of the overpass there. Earlier we saw crews cutting up the guardrail and two King Kong wreckers are out there. Now again, keep in mind this will take quite a while to clear out. Uh, not clear if this was carrying any materials, but we'll, we will reach out to first responders, find out exactly how long it's going to take to clear up and exactly what caused this crash. Not clear what that was, but we know we saw a lot of overnight rain. Uh, Mike Osterhage is here with the latest on that. Yeah, and most of the rain is out of the area now, and boy, did we have a light show as well. This is a uh, great shot over there around Woodlawn Lake from Mr. McClellan, and a lot of cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning. There are some power outages, have been some power outages around the area. Maybe some was caused by lightning, but uh, I would venture a guess that most of it was caused by some of the, uh, the stronger winds out there because we did have wind gusts uh, 40, 50 miles per hour earlier this morning, even a 71-mile-per-hour wind gust reported up around New Braunfels. Out there at the airport 410 uh, maybe still a sheen on the road could have still some damp roads out there because uh, they're not going to be drying out all that quickly just because we've got so much humidity and the the cloud cover out there although the wind does help things dry out a, a, a little bit in our behalf but just watch out for the uh, the damp roads all right as far as rain we do still have some leftover light showers around the area and there's this one lone Thunderstorm cell that tried to pop up around Gonzales. A couple of lightning strikes were reported there within the past half hour. That continues to work its way off to the east and then down to the uh, southeast of Floresville. These are the, the showers that, that kind of stand out a little bit. There's some lighter rain in behind that, but that's pretty much about it as of right now. One or two straggling leftover showers. That may be the case this morning. As far as rainfall, some of the estimates on radar, the majority of it was to the south and to the southwest, going down 35 uh, southwest of San Antonio, inch, inch and a half, two inches, some definitely Definitely much needed rain around here in around the metropolitan area. Not quite as much, about an inch on the extreme south side of Bear County. Half an inch, we picked up uh, about a third out there, excuse me, about an eighth of an inch out at the airport. So not a lot. Take anything we can get, though. My grass is obviously loving it. 72 degrees this morning. Take into account a couple leftover light little showers here and there. And then we will make it up into the upper 70s, 80 at noon. Some more sunshine peeking on through. And we'll call it uh, still most Mostly cloudy skies in some cases, a bit more sunshine is going to be squeezing on through 86 for a high temperature today, and it's still going to be breezy with winds out of the south, primarily at again, 10, 20 miles per hour, gusting at times 25 to 30. Humidity, dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, you get above 60, you feel it. We're going to be hovering in the upper 60s and low 70s all the way through the week and going into the weekend. That on top of the fact that we are going to have some pretty good uh, temperatures around here pretty good as far as high temperatures, I should say. If you like hot weather, you're going to love it. If you don't, well, we're going to be on the above normal side. 80 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. And then later on this afternoon, partly mostly cloudy, 88 for a high temperature. Again, mixture of sunshine and clouds, breezy throughout the day. And then the next few days, we will have a lot of clouds in the morning, sunshine, some sunshine in the afternoon. A couple of uh, thunderstorms are going to be popping up late Wednesday night. And once again, it looks like late Thursday night. Then we go in toward the weekend and temperatures stay very, very hot. We'll still be about... 10 degrees above normal on both ends, highs and lows, getting up into the mid and upper 90s over the weekend. It's going to be a sizzler on Mother's Day.
All right, thank you, Mike. Get ready to take a magic carpet ride. The Children's Ballet of San Antonio will debut its performance of Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp this coming weekend at the Majestic. So today on GMSA at 9, Max Massey is going to give us a behind-the-scenes look at the show as the group puts the final touches on their performance. That's today at 9. We'll see you then. And this morning, fans, friends, and family are giving a lot of love to country star Naomi Judd, who passed away suddenly at the age of 76. And it happened just one day before she and her daughter were inducted last night into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Here's ABC's Rhiannon Alley. Good evening. I'm Naomi Judd. I will stand by you. We are now hearing from Ashley and Winona Judd after the passing of their mother, Naomi. My mama loved you so much, and she appreciated your love for her. And I'm sorry that she couldn't hang on until today. They announced Naomi's death Saturday, attributing mental illness, but not elaborating any further. At the Country Music Hall of Fame induction ceremony last night, they discussed her final moments. I kissed her on the forehead. We all gathered around her. One day later, the Judds were inducted into the Hall of Fame. Naomi and Winona took country music by storm in the 1980s. Recording 14 number one hits. Years later, she spoke about her struggle with depression. She spoke with ABC's Robin Roberts. Yeah. My final diagnosis was severe depression treatment resistant because they tried me on every single thing they had in their arsenal. Her family insisted last night's induction ceremony go on as planned. Ashley Judd took a moment to shine a light on her big sister. I love you and I'm proud of you. And mom is proud of you and she always was. The Judds just reunited on stage in April at the CMT Music Awards, singing one of their most iconic songs. Love can build Which turned out to be their final performance. My A1C stayed here. It needed to be here. Ruby's A1C is down with rebelsis. My A1C wasn't at goal. Now I'm down with rebelsis. Mom's A1C is down with rebelsis. A1C down with rebelsis. In a clinical study, once daily rebelsis significantly lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may work and kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? A1C down Ask your health care provider about Rebelsis today. In your GMA first look, a manhunt underway this morning for a murder suspect and a corrections officer who may have helped him escape from an Alabama jail. That's coming up at 7 a.m. right here on Case at 12. It's uh, 625, about 71 degrees out at San Antonio International Airport. And much more still to come on Good Morning San Antonio, including the latest from a war in Eastern Europe. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi becoming the highest ranking U.S. official to visit Ukraine since the war began. Details ahead. And we'll have the very latest on an overnight shooting at a southwest side apartment complex that left two people dead. And a quick check of the roads with Transguide. Again, the problems there at I-35 at New Laredo Highway. A 18-wheeler hanging off there. Crews still working. We'll be right back. Police say neighbors make a disturbing discovery in the laundry room of their apartment complex. Two men found shot dead. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and members of Congress meeting face to face with the president of Ukraine, vowing continued support for that country's fight against Russia. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington, tracking the latest developments. And here's a look at the radar for now. A lot of those storms moved out of our area, but overnight it was very noisy. 
and windy too. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is May 2nd, and we've been tracking power outages since we went on the air this morning. It started out around 5,000, dropped down to below 2,000, and now another spike, Steph. That's right. Up to 9,000, over 9,000 customers affected right now. That's quite, quite a jump from what we've seen all morning. That's right, and we attributed that to the earlier winds, some rain, and also possibility that some uh, limbs were down on lounge, uh, lines. We also were hearing calls on the scanners for uh, blown transformers in different parts of the metro area. So uh, some of you are waking up this morning. Don't forget you're without power. Uh, don't forget if you are without power, you can still stream us <coughs> on your cellular phone using the KSAT app. That's right. And Mike did talk about the wind earlier. It might be something we'll see later today. Yeah, it's going to stay breezy uh, throughout the rest of today. We're going to have winds. We have winds gusting right now, and it's going to stay gusty about uh, 10 to uh, 20 miles per hour sustained winds with gusts 25 to 30 miles per hour. Of course, we did have some of those gusts earlier this morning on the back side of the, the big big complex of storms that moved on through here and that did produce a wind gust up around New Braunfels of 71 miles per hour. Now we are seeing the skies uh, in places clear somewhat. We'll still have plenty of clouds around here and still just a few leftover showers. Obviously nothing out there at the airport right now. We've got a couple of spots here just to the north of Kennedy and further to the east and then another cluster of some heavier rain, no lightning or a couple of lightning strikes are being detected down there right around uh, Sinton and Refurio, but that's it. And pretty much everything is over one or two little leftover showers here and there throughout the rest of the morning, just to take that into account. But uh, the rain event has now come to an end. 72 degrees at the airport, 76 Stinson and 60s in the hill country. And as far as the gusts right now, 29 at Stinson, so still very breezy there. 24 lost maples, 12 up the road at Canyon Lake, but like I said, we did have much, much gustier winds earlier this morning. Mold and oak are on the moderate side. Low amounts of pecan and grass. The updated pollen count is going to be coming out in about a uh, 45 minutes or so. Some leftover, light little leftover rain. Pretty much it's come to an end though. Mostly, partly to mostly cloudy skies. We'll have a mixture of sunshine and clouds today. Breezy and it's going to be hot with wind with winds, like I said, 25, 30 miles per hour. Those are going to be the gusts and then temperatures in the mid to upper 80s and then hot and humid the rest of the week. A couple of uh, late night storms, Wednesday night and Thursday night. That very small possibility for that right now. And then going into the weekend and Mother's Day. Yeah, we're going to have lots of sunshine, but boy, it's going to be getting even hotter. Get those numbers for you coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso still got those big problems out there. Yeah, Mike, we've been talking about this for two hours now. This big rig that is hanging off the overpass there at 35 in New Laredo. Uh, I'm going to step out of the shot here and kind of show you what we've been seeing all morning long. Uh, some light progress in that area, but as you can take a look from this shot at Transguide, we do have first responders out there on the scene. Something different around this shot, though. We are seeing more traffic that is building in that direction of 35. Now, we can tell you Textile reported this incident at uh, sometime before three this morning, right there at I-35 southbound. Now keep in mind those northbound lanes of 35 are also closed as a precaution, but it's unclear how long it's going to take to get this mess cleared up. Let's go ahead and take you right to the map because this is the problem of the morning. I-35 southbound at New Laredo Highway is where it has been reported. We have our photojournalist Tim Stewart who has been out there, and we're going to talk to him a little bit later on in this newscast to find out what he sees. But we can tell you that it will be a while before before we see this uh, this whole mess cleared up. Wide look at the map though. Thankfully, no other problems here in the metro area. We are just seeing a stalled vehicle off I-10 near Crossroads. No problem there and no need to rush, especially if you're traveling to the Alamo City from any of these communities. But keep in mind, for our friends up in Bolverde 281 southbound, you can expect a 29 minute drive time to the Alamo City. But other than that, we're going to keep our eyes right here off 35 at New Laredo. Coming up a little bit later on, we'll hear from our photojournalist Tim Stewart to find out what progress he's spotting. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police investigating what appears to be a murder mystery among the laundry machines in a laundry room. Uh, two men have been shot and killed at an apartment complex on the west side, not far from Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland. Katrina Weber is live in the 100 block of Rust Leaf Drive off of West Military. And Katrina, what do we know about these men so far? Well, the only thing police have been able to tell us at this time is that they both appear to be in their 30s. Now, both of these men were shot possibly multiple times. In fact, neighbors told police they heard several gunshots, quite a few, after 11 last night. Then they called 911 after seeing the two men down on the ground. Police say no one here at this apartment complex in the 100 block of Restleaf 
actually saw anything as it pertains to the shooting. So right now they don't have a lot of information. Police did not mention anything about any weapons being found here, so it doesn't seem as though these two men shot each other, but more like someone else was involved. They did caution that their investigation is just beginning. Also continuing will be the cleanup here because right now there's still some blood both inside and outside of this laundry room, and we also saw several bullet holes in the walls. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. An update now to a story we first brought you on GMSA. We now know the name of the man who was shot and killed while police say he was breaking into a woman's home on the southeast side. He has been identified as 41-year-old Roman Rodriguez. Police were called out to Kashmir Place around 10 p.m. on Thursday night. That's near Kellis Avenue and the south side Lions Park. Police say a woman in her 30s was home with her three children at the time when she heard Rodriguez entering her back door. And that's when officers say the woman got Got her gun and shot him in the chest. Rodriguez died on the way to the hospital. Some other top stories are following for you this morning. The body of a teen fisherman who disappeared near Galveston County Coast has now been recovered. Chapter crews searched for more than 33 hours. According to the U.S. Coast Guard, the body of 17-year-old Yahir Rodriguez was found around 5.30 last night in the middle of San Luis Pass and brought to shore where his family and first spot responders were waiting. Rodriguez was last seen Saturday night while he was wade fishing near the San Luis Pass Bridge. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi led a congressional delegation in Kiev over the weekend, becoming the highest ranking U.S. official to visit that country since the war began. After meeting face to face with Ukraine's president, Pelosi says the U.S. will continue supporting the country's fight against Russia. ABC's Justin Finch has more. Good morning. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi saying the congressional delegation arrived to Kyiv feeling a mix of great sorrow and great pride. That visit coming as Congress takes up a new request for military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine and as a ceasefire briefly reopened for some civilians to escape. In the bomb-ravaged southeastern city of Mariupol, new video posted by city officials and filmed by the far-right Azov Battalion appears to show Ukrainian civilians safely escaping after weeks of war. And at that Mariupol steel plant defended by Ukrainian forces, women and children seen evacuating Sunday in video released by Russia's defense ministry. As many as 1,000 civilians believe still hold up inside along with Ukrainian fighters. President Zelensky saying about 100 civilians safely cleared those front lines thanks to a ceasefire and the efforts of the Red Cross and the United Nations. Once over, Ukrainian officials say Russian troops resume bombing that steel plant across Ukraine, Russia escalating its assaults and the U.S. showing renewed support for Ukraine. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi leading a previously unannounced congressional delegation to Ukraine. Pelosi, now the highest ranking U.S. official to visit Kyiv, arriving just days after President Biden called on Congress to authorize $33 billion in military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. And the White House just announced First Lady Jill Biden will visit Ukrainian parents and children in Romania and Slovakia who've been displaced by Russia's war. That visit taking place over Mother's Day weekend. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Spain officials say the cell phones of the Prime Minister and Defense Minister were infected last year with spyware only available to government agencies in an operation that was not authorized by the government. A government minister said that Monday that Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's phone was breached twice in May of 2021 and Defense Minister Margarita Robles's device was targeted once the following month. Spanish officials say the breaches result in a significant amount of data being obtained. It's not clear who is behind the breach. Calmer weather conditions in northern New Mexico helping over 1,000 firefighters battling the nation's largest active wildfire. Strong winds have pushed the fire across some containment lines towards Las Vegas. The New Mexico Air National Guard has dropped thousands of gallons of water from UH-60 Blackhawk helicopters 
So far, no reports of any injuries from the wildfires. And happening today, the next round of real life drama for actor Johnny Depp and ex-wife Amber Heard, with Heard reportedly set to take the stand in a Virginia courtroom. Depp filing a defamation suit against Heard for $50 million. Heard countersuing for $100 million. So far, the trial highlighted by days of testimony. Heard has accused Depp of repeatedly assaulting her throughout their relationship, including in 2015, where she claims in court documents that he headbutted her. Depp denies ever hitting her during their relationship. And one of the largest festivals in South Texas taking a deadly turn, a rattlesnake handler passing away after he got bit by a snake. It happened at the Rattlesnake Roundup Festival in Freer, Texas. Eugene De Leon was flown to the hospital, however, later died of his injuries. He has been handling snakes for more than 20 years. You can read more about this story right now on KZ.com. 640, about 72 degrees. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Today, we're gonna to take you behind the gates of Blackland Air Force Base and show you what basic military training looks like for recruits arriving here in San Antonio. Welcome back and good morning from here in Military City, USA. You know, recruits go through a lot when they join the United States Air Force, including eight weeks of training. Jonathan Cotto takes us step-by-step -step on their journey as they go through basic military training. Every young man and woman who enlists in the United States Air Force arrives here, San Antonio, Texas, Military City, USA. But their journey doesn't begin until they arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland, better known as the gateway to the Air Force. New recruits will go through eight weeks of basic military training where they'll learn everything needed to become an American airman. Uh, before you come into the military, you're a civilian, you're worried about yourself at home. You only have you to watch out for. But when you come here, it's a teamwork aspect. You have to consider everybody else in this team and be able to come together and work together as one unity. Close ranks! Hatch. New recruits are introduced to drill from the moment they arrive at Lackland. Right. Hatch. An important component to a recruit's training. Forward. Hatch. Head. Top. Hip. Hip. On this drill pad, they're out here approximately five to six hours a week uh, doing drill, if not more. Uh, sometimes we can pull them out here a little bit further. We have some downtime. We'll go out here and we can practice some more drill and really get that precision in there, get that discipline and instill excellence in them at all times. Throughout the eight week training, recruits learned everything from the airman's role in Air Force missions. Oh, place your weapon above your head. No. To basic place expeditionary airman skills and training, also known as BEAST. No. Alarm yellow. I repeat, alarm yellow. <laughs> alarm. Yellow. So this exercise, this is a culmination of every single thing that the trainees have learned out in basic training. So when they come here from their line squadrons, they've already learned their base defense skills, which we call FEST, TCCC, which is how they treat a combat casualty. A realistic forward operating base environment where they practice wartime readiness skills, also receiving Air Force nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare training. BEAST is a whole different level of training and conditioning. Instructors say the gear they wear during this specific training adds 15 degrees of body heat to what they're already experiencing. They say many of the recruits experience exhaustion and dehydration. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 646. Let's get a look at 35 at New Laredo. This has been a big problem this morning, and now we are seeing some progress. Let me step out of the shot and show you where we see that crash detected. You can see that big rig that looks like it. That is actually uh, there dangling off of the overpass off of 35 near New Laredo Highway. Now, we have our photojournalist, Tim Stewart, who has been live there throughout the entire morning. Tim, good morning. Thank you for being out there for us right now. We are seeing some progress. What are you able to spot right now? Well, Stephen, right now in the last five or so minutes, we've seen more progress than I've seen since I got here at about 445 this morning. Uh, you can see off to the right, the crane on the King Kong there have pulled the uh, the truck from where it was wedged and the, the trailer was sticking up at about a 45 degree angle. It appears that right now they've finally almost gotten it to where it's back on the bridge after that it'll be a little bit easier for them to clean up but it's still going to take some time yeah tim and we know that this is a pretty uh, serious situation we're seeing some of the crews out there working to clear this up you've been out there for quite a while now uh, how has the traffic been impacted over the last hour or so since you've been out there 
Um, the traffic on 35 North seems to be okay. You know, typically there are problems with rubberneckers. Uh, traffic on 35 Southbound is honestly, Stephen, backed up as far as I can see, which if I had to guess, up the hill and around a corner slightly to the east is about a mile and a half or two miles. Uh, you can probably see that a little bit better from Transguide, but traffic is, I mean, it's, it's not good and it's not going to get any better. Well, Tim, we appreciate you being out there and thank you for the update. We are seeing some progress out there. 35 at New Laredo. Tim Stewart reporting for us as well. Let's head over to Mike Osage for the latest on the forecast. Great video, Tim. Thank you very much for that. Great, great reporting. All right, we are starting to see some sunshine, some clear skies uh, as the clouds break up this morning after we had all the rain that moved through here in the overnight hours and still a few leftover showers well off to the east, but those continue to move on out of here. And that is then the end of it. As far as rainfall totals, we picked up about a half an inch of rain here in downtown. Estimates from radar and an um, inch, a little more than an inch on the uh, south side of town. Let me go back here down to the uh, southwest. You can see anywhere from an inch, inch and a half to close to, to two inches of rain. So folks down to the south and to the southwest down 35 picked up the lion's share of this. Officially out at the airport, we picked up about an eighth of an inch, 13 hundredths to be exact. You may have gotten a bit more in your backyard. So we take into account just the one or two leftover little showers that are left over down to the southeast this morning. Obviously, we're seeing a few holes in the clouds and we'll make it up to 80 degrees today at noon and then continue up into the mid and some folks even toward the upper 80s later on today and we'll start to clear out a bit more later on tonight but it is going to be breezy all day long with winds out of the south primarily 10 20 miles per hour then gusting on top of that 25 close to 30 miles per hour and the big news this morning was up in new braunfels when they had that 71 mile per hour wind gust which was not specifically or directly associated with the thunderstorm that moved through here but it was on the back side of it a phenomenon that that had developed and that created those gusts conditions earlier this morning. Humidity is going to be staying sky high. Dew points remain in the upper 60s, low 70s all the way through the rest of the week. We're not going to get any break in the humidity. It's going to feel a lot like summer out there this week for the first week of May. And this is the long range computer model, of course, initialized with those uh, showers off to the west. Today we are going to have, like I said, sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. And then tomorrow, same situation. Now, Wednesday night, there is a chance for a few uh, showers and thunderstorms to develop. We're going to keep an eye on that. And then same situation then late Thursday night. Another disturbance slides on through here. After that, we're going to have some clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon, and that's going to be the situation through Mother's Day as well. Great Mother's Day, but it's going to be a hot one, so just prepare for that on Sunday. 80 at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and then we are going to continue to see, again, a mixture of sunshine and clouds throughout the day. Partly cloudy, breezy, 88 high temperature, and the next few days, overall temperatures are going to be averaging 10 degrees above normal, both the high end and the low end, 92 on Wednesday. We have that chance for a couple of uh, evening nighttime thunderstorms Wednesday night as well as Thursday night and then go into the weekend 95 on Saturday 98 on Sunday and yes we are going to have plenty of humidity around here on Sunday as well something now it's way down the road so can't get too excited about it but some of the long range computer models have perhaps a wet week next week really yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Maybe but a payoff to the heat. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And so if you have reservations at a restaurant on the patio on Sunday, mm -hmm. just keep that in mind too. One of those yeah. portable little Mr. Fans or something. Yeah. Sneak inside. Yeah. yeah. Sneak inside <laughs> if you can. 651, about 72 degrees. And are you looking for a new career tomorrow on GMSA? We have some pro tips for <coughs> getting your resume in top shape. Glad you're starting your day with us here on GMSA. Back outside with live cam. We'll wrap up GMSA after this break. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from Ukraine. The urgent evacuation of roughly 100 civilians from the besieged steel factory and the new sign of solidarity from the U.S. Also, we're celebrating Naomi Judd, the country music legend's daughter, spoke at the Country Music Fall of Fame induction. We'll tell you what we're learning. And our best friend, Charlie Gibson. <laughs> I said best friend, so sure, he's my best friend. Here live with his daughter talking about their next chapter right here at ABC. All of that and so much more coming up on GMA.
Let's get another look at 35 at New Laredo. We are seeing some progress out there. We saw it from Tim Stewart, our photojournalist, uh, where we saw a crane that was picking up the front end of that big rig, which has been hanging off the overpass there for now over four hours. First responders taking some time, but of course we can expect this to cause an issue for your morning commute, especially off I-35 southbound at New Laredo Highway, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Rain has moved on out of the area. We've got a lot of leftover clouds, a few holes in the clouds around here this morning. And as you can see, that continues to work its way. Any leftover rain is well down there along the coastal plain. 72 degrees here in town, 68 in comfort. And we still have a decent breeze. It is going to stay windy throughout the day and high temperature today up to 88. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9. Have a great day. GMA is next.